my trend for 2022 is quantifying your desired outcomes from an investment in SaaS cloud technologies. Um, my name is Kevin Christopher George. I've got 15 years of experience in the tech sector across various areas. The last approximately 10 years have been spent as a SaaS or cloud customer success manager supporting large enterprise organizations on the corporate side, the for-profit side. And what I'm doing with my transition over to the nonprofit side is bringing some of that background and expertise and what I've seen over to what I think will prove beneficial and valuable to the, to the nonprofit sector. And there's one key thing that I've been noticing in the for-profit side that I wanna make sure I articulate and, and bring to the forefront. And I think it's gonna resonate for a lot of the folks on the nonprofit sector. So I'll, I'll, I'll paint a picture of the general industry where we are now when it comes to SaaS cloud technologies, where we find ourselves. I mean, for-profit organizations have been leveraging cloud for decades now, right? There's been a massive increase in the popularity and adoption of SaaS cloud solutions and strategies. And we see that through this survey, this data set from BMC, a cloud provider, taking a look at the largest SaaS companies by market cap in 2021 to 2022. And you're, you'll probably see a lot of familiar names in here, right? The final piece is that work from home policies as a result of the pandemic, they made cloud a necessity. It wasn't just a nice thing to have anymore, but now it's become a situation where we have to have some of these innovative solutions in place. Honing it in a little bit more, right? We talked about the top level industry and bringing it into kind of what your experience may be as you go out and look for SaaS cloud solutions. This typical step, sorry, to SaaS cloud adoption is first you feel the pain, right? Something's wrong, you gotta fix something. Ideally, you, you build a business case associated with that pain. You research solutions using some of the different providers we have here, GetApp, Captera, Google, G2, TrustRadius. You purchase and implement the solution, and then you focus on training, adoption, and support. And that's pretty standard. That's the kind of usual process that you go through. The interesting thing that I've noticed on the, on the for-profit side and what I'm seeing as I get more and more engaged with the nonprofit side is that we seem to forget the business case. And the business case is really what was the, the one spot where we formalized the success metrics and KPIs that we needed to hit to justify our actual investment in that solution. When we take a look at this survey that was done by Boston Consulting Group, across 895 different digital transformation initiatives, only 30% were deemed successful by the executive team that was leading them, which shines a very big light on the necessity to really drive value from your investment in technology. And so the tough question becomes that we've got to prove that we get what we paid for. And again, with a SaaS relationship that is typically a year after year relationship or contract, why we should keep paying for it. And so this is where the actionable items come in. The focus should be on planning to prove right from the start. So I've got five steps here and, and they're iterative. So the first one, in your business case, include five to seven metrics that you need to hit to eliminate the pain and justify your investment in the SaaS solution that you're getting. Number two, make and validate assumptions with internal stakeholders. And then this is key, document them and get sign off on them. Make sure that everybody's reading from the same, pay, from the same playbook. Three, have collaborative sessions with the vendor to clearly tie the product features to your metrics. This is really important because it's gonna dictate whether or not you need additional add-ons or services or training, and you wanna get that level of transparency to know what you need to, to, to invest in. Number four, ensure the solution can quickly and easily generate the reports and dashboards that align with your metrics. You need to be able to go in and run a report, pull up a dashboard that is directly tied to the five to seven metrics that you set out in your business case. If you're unable to pull that information together really quickly, again, it's gonna be a really tough time trying to say that the solution that you've implemented and spent all those months implementing and rolling out and training users on is actually delivering the value that it needs to deliver. And then finally, set up a cadence with the vendor. Typically there's gonna be a customer One success manager or a CSM assigned to your account. You wanna to get together with them on a regular basis to talk about the metrics and really identify what opportunities or threats are impacting your ability to hit those metrics. And then you loop to the top. This is an iterative process where you keep going through this process to refine the business case metrics to make sure you're validating them, make sure you're running the reports and that you're really getting the value that, out of that investment in technology. The trend for 2022, it's gonna be a focus on quantitative, not just qualitative value based on SaaS cloud customers desired and I would even highlight required outcomes. If you need to connect with me, kgeorge at greenmerits.com, www.greenmerits.com, hoping to connect with you in the future.